My name is Fiona Carvel and I'm a professional pastel artist. I paint a wide range of subject matters, landscapes and seascapes and still life and I'm very much ideas led. My personal work includes responses to environments, personal connections with the elements, movement and light. Some pieces are more about stillness and fascinations with shape and colour or a reflection of a memory. My work is re represented by galleries in Northumberland and Scotland and I have exhibited with the Pastel Society in London for the past few years. I was awarded the Royal Talons Rembrandt Award in 2020 for Fire of the Deep and was delighted to be included again in 2021. In 2017, I became a Unison Colour Associate Artist, which is something that I'm very proud of. I'm also a qualified and very experienced teacher. I've been running pastel workshops for several years now and have my own collection of online pastel demonstrations too. And today I'm going to show you how to do some apples using pastel. So you can see over here I've got my pastels all set out and I've got my apples as well and I've also got um, my outline drawing done on my easel here drawn out in pastel pencil. So a very simple composition to begin with but this is going to be a good exercise in showing you how pastel can be built up in layers and how to use blending. Now we're in a little bit closer here so you can see nice and close up um, what I'm going to be doing here. I've got um, a dark purple pastel to begin with that I'm going to start off with by going into the darker areas. Now I'm using um, Eurart paper which is a sanded paper and this is um, very good for layering colours because it sort of grips the pastel nicely and you'll be able to see um, the results of that as we build things up. You'll also be able to hear, if I just do that a bit, can you hear that? Very gritty, okay. So there are lots of different pastel surfaces and um, the ones with what's called a tooth tends to be kind of gritty, um, which means that you need to build up layers of pastel first before you do any blending otherwise you'll get very sore fingers <laughs> and it also doesn't really go anywhere if I just do that it's just kind of moves a bit gets a bit dirty but that's about it you need to have a lot more pastel on to be able to do much more now I'm just picking out um, very dark bits there where I want the darkest parts of the the redder apple to be so I'm going to gradually get lighter. It's one of the best tips to remember when working with pastel is always to work from dark to light. I know this is um, a very different way for if you're used to working with something like um, watercolour, for example. Um, it'll be a very different process. Um, but you layer things up and that enables you to give a sense of depth to what you're doing. So I'm just going to, I'm looking at to see where I've got the shadow happening on the side of this apple here. directional lines in there so I'm looking very carefully at my apple whilst I'm doing this just to try and get a, an idea of the pattern. Now pastels you can use on the side as I'm doing here or you can use on the point as well so lots of different ways that you can create your marks it makes it really flexible. Around here as well. Okay, 
and I'm also going to um, put a little bit of um, this is more of a bluey purple that I'm going to put on slight great into it as well just on the darker areas the side of this apple as well again I'm looking for the darkest tones I think I'm going to put a little bit of this round here too. So once I've got a colour in my hand, I tend to try and see right where can we use it. And that's going to go out there. It's also worth um, remembering that if you're working in pastel, you don't begin with um, very fine details at all. They come much later on when you're doing the sort of the final stages. So that means that you need to be a little bit patient when you're um, building up your colour. So I'm just trying to block in different areas of tone and that can come over here like that thinking about the shape of the apple very much here now if I move that around a little bit can see that's just starting to shift now. A pastel is a real crossover between painting and drawing. So the drawing side is probably more obvious at this stage when you're putting things down um, because you're using strokes and lines and different marks. Um, paint effects kind of come as you slowly build things up and as the picture gets covered it gets a lot more sort of painterly if you like. Right so I've got now a lighter one again this is more lilac. I'm going to put a little bit of that into here. Now I'm doing this in a kind of um, impressionistic way I guess um, as opposed to kind of photo real so looser um, looking for kind of color shape expression as opposed to um, you know trying to exactly copy something in a very technical way there. So I'm going to start to um, change um, my purples now. So um, this one's got a little bit more red in it. Most of my um, pastels are, tend to be unisons. Um, they're really, really lovely. It's sort of rich tones that they have, very creamy and buttery. Um, not chalky at all. Um, I think Often people think that pastel is um, hard and chalky, um, but there's so many different kinds um, that actually a lot of them are really quite smooth and creamy. Not to be confused either with oil pastel, which is different again. This is soft pastel, okay. A little bit of that in here. And just some little flecks here and there. So 
we're now starting to get into more definite reds. This is a kind of a ready raspberry colour. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of that in, I think. So you'll see the, um, the gaps of the paper will slowly start to disappear. But I'm not just kind of filling in the gaps, I'm also layering on top of colours that have gone there already. This um, pastel is opaque, so it means that you can um, apply different pressures to build up different densities of colour and allow light to come through as well. And have very, very fine layers of pastel sometimes, which means that your colours start to mix. Slight little bit of this. I don't want to do too much of it because it's just a hint of it, I think. More of a lipstick pink. And then we've got, now this is very strong red and I do have to be careful with this because I don't want it to be overpowering. You'll see as soon as I put it on, it's really, really vivid. See how bright that is. I'm going to blend it down. You see how it softens. Very lightly adding a different tone. This is quite a, a gentle orange here, a kind of a russety one. So I'm going to put some of this one down, I think, to fill in just little bits there. Apples make really lovely subjects because it's a lovely simple shape, um, but you can really go to town on exploring the different colours and tones without worrying too much about um, it being f um, fiddly in terms of composition or form or anything. You're just sort of trying to create a, a spherical feeling to it and catch the light and really get those colours all included. Very fine lines here and there, and then blending in there. So I'm wanting to start to get the this paper to start to disappear a bit more, I think. So it's got more of a, a base now. The other thing to remember to do is when you're working with pastel is um, to wipe your fingers because you look how mucky I'm getting here. So I tend to use biodegradable wipes um, to make sure that they are plastic free. <laughs> um, you can get them now, um, but it is important that you stop and clean your fingers or go and wash your hands every now and again to stop. Um, dark colours being kind of dragged all over your picture. Try and work upward, upright on an easel and that's always going to be better to stop any bits of dust um, going anywhere because they just tend to drop. Um, the amount of dust that you get off pastels will vary according to the quality of them and you'll find that the better quality ones like Unison or Sennelier um, don't give so much dust. Okay. So that's worth bearing in mind. Always um, make sure that you've got something to sort of wipe and dry hands with. So I'm going to block in more of this one as well now. So if that's not finished at all, don't worry, not done yet. Um, I'm going to put in some of the 
darker areas here as well. So this is a sage green. Just block that in there. It kind of goes around the top. And I've got some of that. Then we want um, to get a little bit brighter and stronger, I think. So got um, some green now to put on. Um, so this is a paler green. I'm going to just put this down. So I know a lot of this is going to kind of disappear. But it's a, a base layer, if you like, to um, apply other colours on top of. And that's going to drag down there. less of this round there I think that needs to be a little bit lighter really um, so I'm gonna put oh, a little bit of this but not too much very lightly The nice thing about pastel as well is that it's it can be so expressive and there's no absolute you know right and wrong in terms of um you know style or anything like that at all it's um can be very personal very individual um which is one of the great joys of it it's very very flexible A little bit of lighter colour, so that's brighter orange now. I know there's sort of lines and dashes around this, so which is really quite lovely. And none of this is finalized yet. So I'm just, let me see what I'm doing there. Just dragging the color out. So right now, they're not really looking finished at all, so, but it's a good base to now sort of go in and now add some lighter colors and put some shadows in, finish details and highlights. So remember when you're building a pastel picture, it's all about stages and um, it happens gradually. So I've, what I'm also going to do here is I've got a nice bright orange and I'm going to take the paper off, which I know can be painful <laughs> if you've just got some nice new pastels. This is quite an old one, um, but you do need to take them off. So I'm going to. This probably looks a bit bright to begin with, but it's going to tone down. And I 
I've got lovely little delicate bits that are flex in the side of the apple. Which I can continue with over here as well, just a little bit here and there. Of course, I haven't done the stalks yet, but they will happen. I want a bit of yellow, I think, down here as well. So I've got a nice golden colour. So that's going to come in here. And because I've got those darker colours and those oranges underneath here, I can get that lovely kind of opacity that I want. So I get that sense of different colours being underneath these brighter bits. And I can blend bits in or leave them where I want them to be stronger. So that's um, I need a little bit more orange, I think, here and there. Fine bits. So I'm pressing a little bit harder now. See this lovely red. to introduce some of this um, sage green now to um, try and put a bit of structure in the top of this apple here where there's near the stalk is. that as well I think around the edges here as well So at this point it's good to try and get um, a little bit more definition in now before I kind of go into build up finer details. Um, so I'm going to use some pastel pencils. So I've got a dark blue one here. So I'm going to pop in the shadow here and redraw. where the stalk should be goes in there and we're going to have some shadow coming out there as well So 
Same thing with this one here, but I'm going to be adding some more definition to both of these with some pastel pencils after this stage. So it's just to define where that's going to be. Um, and then I'm also going to in a little bit of shadow which I'll add to in a minute I can see that that's going to be brighter here there's little flecks of detail So trying to sort of know when to stop blending is quite critical really because you can just kind of carry on blending and blending and blending and then realise that you've kind of lost the detail that you wanted so it is important to think right okay I think it's just about there. So I think this stalk here is going to need some more definition and picking up and some sort of darker colours. So I'm going to introduce some pastel pencil now to do some sort of finer detailing to build up on this base that I've got. So I'm adding finishing and finer details here now. So I've got um, some red, so this is with pastel pencils. So I've got that base now that I've built up with the, the pastel sticks. So it's kind of up to you so how detailed you want your final picture to be. Um, so I'm just working on some of these brighter bits now to make it a little bit more defined. And you can carry on building up little bits of detail like this. And it's best once you get to this sort of stage to Try and resist the urge to um, overblend because you can lose your detail. So I'm doing very, very fine layering a pastel pencil on here now. this one over here as well I want this area here to be brightened up quite a lot I think now so I've got I'm going to go back to using some sticks and I've got some the pale yellow here and also um, kind of golden yellow I'm going to try and emphasize now where lights coming And then I think I'm going to tone some of that down in there with the pastel pencil. I'm 
has in here as well. So that's stock in there. And then I'm going to add some bright orange. To the apple here. You can carry on with it with your picture in this way until you kind of get to the point where you think, right, I think I'm just about there. I'm going to add a little bit of highlights on here. And then I'm going to finish up by doing a little bit of finer light details around the sides there, a bit more pastel pencil. So there we have it, a couple of very colourful apples. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching the little demonstration and it's given you a few tips on how to approach using pastel. Thanks very much for watching.